Hi, I'm Tim Shaw. Welcome from all of us at Spit Bucket. We've got a really, really special episode to share with you today. We're going to take you through the process of buying wine, an important process for anyone interested in wine, and I'm sure everyone has done it. We've got a really nice little independent bottle store we're going to go and see, and we're going to ask the proprietor to suggest us three different Savion Blancs. So we're here at Vaucluse Cellars. Come with me and I'll give you a look around. Hello. How are you going? Um, I was wondering if you'd be able to help us today. We're after three Savion Blancs, representative of three regions, France, Australia and New Zealand. All right, come on down. There we go. Yeah. Okay, welcome. Welcome to the, the sharp end of the spit bucket episode where we're going to taste the three Savion Blancs which we bought up at the cellars. I'm here with Ellie and uh, he's going to help us uh, taste, taste through the wines. Hopefully, yes. So what do we have today, Tim? So we've got, we've got a big basket of fruit, we've got white flowers, we've got lantana, we've got a bit of grass, we've even got an asparagus sprig and we're going to taste all of these with the wines and we're going to sort of match them up and just see what, what composes, what sort of smells, what sort of flavours are in, 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 in blah, blah, within each glass. Perfect. We're going to start with the Teller Terre from South Australia. Yep. Now this is a pretty interesting Savion Blanc. It's grown from really, from Savion Blanc vines which have been placed really close together. And so this wine has also had a bit of batonnage done to it while it's been in barrel which means like the leaves in here, they've stirred them up through the wine and that gives it a bit of a, a fuller mouthfeel. And we'll, we'll see how that goes. So what, what do you think of the colour there? Well, I think it's a, it's a typical Sauvignon Blanc colour, mm -hmm. to be honest. Uh, plus, it's an 08, so the colour is perfect for it. If it was a bit darker, then I'd be worried. You would be a bit worried. Yeah. Mm, so that's got a, it's, that's almost, that's very nice. It's yeah. sort of full bodied smell. So aroma. what are you getting on the nose? Well, I'm getting, some white flowers, and if I may, I mean, I, I didn't pick these this morning for nothing. I'm definitely getting some white flowers. Now, Ellie, you, you grab a bunch of these white flowers and you smell it against the wine. The, the question I have here is, a lot of people like myself will make the mistake of thinking, oh, hang on, I'm smelling this, but I can't smell it here. And the reason uh -huh. why I can't smell it, I'll tell you why. Mm. I mean, I can, but if I was a normal person, I would say I can't smell it because I'm expecting it to smell exactly what I'm smelling here. It's usually the after smell yes. that you're after, correct? It is. So that, that's, that's a big mistake that we all make, is expecting to taste chocolate, like you tasted chocolate when you first bite into it. Well, that's never going to happen with a wine, and you'd be a bit worried if it did. Yeah. But um, it, it's, it's sort of the... It's the aftertaste the, that comes with it, right? It is, it is. Yeah. Another thing which is important when we're um, trying red wines and white wines, but um, a lot of people serve white wines a bit too cold. Now, these are probably the perfect temperature. Mm. They're not, it's not... You see the glass, there's no condensation coming through. That's because they're probably at about 17, 18. Hang on, we'll get an exact reading on how I've um, got my wine making tools here. You're going to put so this in my glass. We'll put that right in here and we're going to get a temperature reading of the exact wine which we're tasting it at. And, and, and why it does is that? make a difference. Why is that? Well, the warmer a wine is, the more volatile it is, the, the more. Um, they call it volatile acid that comes through on the nose and through the palate. And when you have a, a wine which is really cold, it, so, it seems to close down and you're really only tasting the acid, the acid structure on the palate. I'm, I'm getting a, a bit of the uh, zesty lemon on the nose. A bit of zest of lemon, okay. Let's put that to the test. There you go. There you go, he's picked it. So there, there's, a, mm. there's some nice acidity coming mm. through on the nose and that's and once you really get the lemon and the and the wine close together, they really sort of mesh together. It's amazing. So if I was to go like this now and, and put them oh. all together. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There you go, it's getting better now. Yeah, okay. That's that's coming a bit toward, more towards the wine, but what is really lacking, and which is quite hard to replicate with fruit, I'm just trying to look to see that if we've acidity. got something. Is that acidity and that sort of, that sort of, um, I don't know, it's the, the lees, the lees contact. Well, mm. maybe if we, so we, we, need, we need something that's going to try and um, draw out sort of the savoury aspects of the wine because this white wine is um, atypical for a Sauvignon Blanc. It's not purely fruit driven and, and this dead haze 
It's not exact, but it's it's something what we need to, to use to try and draw out the, the complexity and the, the savouriness of the wine. Well, if, if you smell this, you're, you're pretty close, <laughs> aren't you? You're getting there, you're getting there. Well, Ellie's going to come out with a bowl of, of everything mixed together soon, and, and he'll say, I've, I've made your wine. This is amazing. So, on the palate, you smell, what, what do you think? Smells the same? Smell this, yeah. So he agrees with me too, the Don. Okay. All right, all right. Uh, let's let's move on. Okay. On the palate, I get a bit of salty savouriness, which um, I don't I don't get that astringent uh, fruit uh, and acidity of a New Zealand Sauvignon mm. Blanc. I get really nice savouriness, which I, I which you know. Let's see what temperature it came comes out at. It's actually very nice, Tim. So we're at uh, sixteen degrees. At the moment? So, so you, you recommend that we have the wine at 16 degrees all the time? I do. If you get your wine out of the, uh, the fridge, it's going to be about 8 or 9 degrees. For God's sake, leave it. <laughs> leave it on the table. Leave it on or the put, table Put it in your while. glass and let it warm in, in your glass. It's one of the nicest things to have wine in your glass, warming up, and, ch and it, that'll change the characteristics. So Tim, moving on, we're having the New Zealand Craggy Range single vineyard. I'm going to fill your glass now. Excellent. I'm excited for this New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. It's what their reputation has been built on, that and uh, Pinot Noir. Yeah, the Sauvignon and Pinot Noir, yeah, exactly. And that's because of the uh, cooler climate environment that they have? It is. Uh, they, I mean, there's a constant running joke that their grapes for Sauvignon Blanc never get ripe enough. And that's why you get this super, super astringent, pungent, tropical fruit sort of flavour. But let's, let's see. So on the nose, I'm getting this. I, well, there you go. I'll give you, give you a few glasses. For me, a few flowers, I'm getting grass and a lot of it. There's a lot of acidity in this one. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's what I'm thinking. Maybe if I actually crush this. What I'm going to try. I'll get something. I, I, think I've got, I think I've got exactly what you want. Okay. There you go. Half a passion fruit. I mean, tropical mm. fruit. This has got the acidity. Mm. This is this is a real match you, made in heaven for New I, Zealand. I think you're probably right. This is what I was after. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna get some peach as well because I think it needs to flesh out with a bit of white, mm. some sort of white fruit. I'll open that. This peach isn't fully ripe. We're just coming into the season, but it should demonstrate. Hmm. I think what we're seeing here is that Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand is full of tropical fruits, passion fruit passion fruit, your peaches. If we had pineapple, I'm sure mm. it would work, probably. Um, and, th and then that's all integrated with a heavy base of lime and sort of freshly cut grass. It's all, it's all sort of green, green and, and fresh. See, I, I, I'm actually getting this, but it's missing this floral mm. smell of the nose too. Try this honeysuckle. Um, we're kind of um, running a bit short. <laughs> On white flowers. On white flowers. Mm. Yeah, see, now we're getting closer. Now we're getting closer, much closer. Yeah. Oh, mmm, getting that arsenic, <laughs> <laughs> that arsenic smell. So on the palate, what are we getting? On the palate, you're getting crisp, fresh, dry acidity, which is um, typical for New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. It is, it is a dry white wine style. Uh, there is no residual sugar in this wine, and uh, it's, very, it's very well made. Are you getting, are you getting uh, any of that? Do you see my spit? It was very professional. That's why we have him on spit bucket. That was folks. really good. Hmm. I forgot what, what were you asked me. What was the question? I'm just thinking of the spit. I, I want what you get on the palate. What, okay. do you, what are you, what I'll are you saying? Hang on, hang on. I was concentrating on my spit. Hang on. So, I mm. just think this passion fruit is where it's at. Hmm. I'll get passion fruit, that lemon acidity in mm -hmm. the finish. Yep. And a bit of flour too. I've never had flour in my life. I don't eat flour, but it, I can, that, this, you got this. Um, Ellie, if, if you've never eaten a flour, this is the time. This is the time you, I eat flour. This is okay. the time you're eating a flour. Well, you've seen it first it's on spit bucket all the time. But right? these are so. edible flours. Come on, the whole lot. Mm. Let's, uh, let's see the whole lot. You've seen it here first. Hmm. That's not, that's not the one I'm looking well, for. It's got a bit of peppery, mm. sort of pepper. Maybe, I wouldn't maybe. eat that one. Don't eat that one. Don't eat that one. That's uh, poisonous. 
but there you go. If I die, guys, I'm dying for you. I'm going to cut in a segment of how poisonous that plant really is. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks, Tim, for saving my life. So yeah, you're spot on. So I do get the passion fruit. And I'll get that acidity at the end. So probably if you put lemon and passion fruit mm -hmm. and the flower would have what we're having now. I think so. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay, let's okay. move on to the next one. Let's then. move on. And now we are up to the Puy Fume. Yes. I have a feeling you're gonna elbow me, but you did it. Okay, so the color, uh, from what I can see, is a bit lighter than the other two. Mm. It is a little bit lighter, but quite similar. Mm. And um, as with all these wines, they're sort of meant for the poultry, oh. the fish, okay. the yeah. seafood. <laughs> so I think Ellie likes this wine. It's amazing the difference between all three of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, this is a. Oh. It's got a bit of um, wet rock. Yeah, I was gonna say something wet. Maybe wet grass, wet grass. Would you say wet grass? I, I would say wet grass. It's got a bit of a, it's got a bit of a pong to it. Let's, uh, let's see if that Could it be off. wet hay maybe? It would be nice to get some wet wetness. Well, what, do you want, I can spit on the grass and then you can grab oh, it if you here want. Here we go. Jesus. Don't say <laughs> I never do anything for you, Ellie, but this is, <laughs> this is some real nice wet hay. Yeah, I can tell. It's got uh, some nice seepage, natural seepage. There you go. You were, you were spot on. That's so give, give that a smell. It's, so, it's got a bit of a rotten oh, yeah. character. Mm. Yeah. But, but that's it, isn't it? That's, that's purely spot it. Spot on. Well, okay, all right, so why am I cutting this again? Well, pomegranate has got really nice acidity. It's uh, really, really well mm. balanced. Mm. Uh, it's, it's usually used for cooking or fresh for salads. Uh, it's quite Hang a on, bit. Smell this, and then smell your wine. Well, very similar. It is, isn't very it? Very similar. It's, I've never smelled pomegranate before. It's the first time. I mean, I've eaten it a lot, but yes. I've never sat there and said, you know what, let me smell the pomegranate. But I am today, and I'm comparing it to the white wine, and it's amazing. And I think um, you, you'll a be... A lot of similarities. If, if, give me the other wet stuff that you had there. Oh, did you like it? <laughs> Gee. I'm getting some more. It's okay. It's okay, yeah. We can... Well, he, well, he's uh, experimenting. I, I personally think that pear is where it's at. Wine? I think it's going to be very hard for us to match what you're getting on this nose because it's so complex. Well, you, we you're getting a lot of different flavours, but you are getting the pear, you are getting the pomegranate, you are getting the wet grass mm -hmm. and the hay, but it's coming at you in different stages, I guess. On the palate? On the palate. On the palate, we have a very structured wine. We've got those uh, liquid minerals coming through. I know it's a very esoteric term, but that's exactly what you get on, on the palate. Uh, you get some nice savory, salty characteristics. And um, that's all backed up with a bit of, bit of fruit. That's great. And a leaf. Yes, indeed. Tim, this has been great. Uh, it has um, been. We've learned a lot today, obviously, and uh, I really hope the guys back home learned a lot from us and from us being silly, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so, thank you very much for having me tonight. Oh, it's been, it's been our pleasure. And, um, and we really do hope you got the most out of it. Unfortunately, we can't convey the smells to you, but this is only more uh, impetus for you to try this at home. Mm. Okay, so uh, from us at Spitbucket, just remember we spit, so you don't have to. Cheers. Cheers.